Here's the second example of exponential growth and decay using calculus. We did growth before, now we're going to do decay, and specifically radioactive decay, which is the classic example that's extremely well modeled by an exponential decay relationship. So it's a constant proportional decay rate now, and this model, the only thing that's going to be different, it's, it's exactly the same, it's just that we're going to expect k to be negative. Because for a certain positive amount of our sample, like our radioactive sample of radon-224, for example, um, the dy dt should be negative. It's going away, so the k has to be negative. So we shouldn't be surprised to get a negative k. So here's the situation. Again, it's just slightly modified from a book problem. I changed the isotope. After 130 minutes, a sample of radon-224 decayed to 43.1% of its original amount. What's the half-life? That's the standard way of describing how fast one of these things decays. And how long would it take for a sample to decay down to 5%, quite a, quite a bit less? Okay. Well, let's think about a real ballpark kind of thing. To decay to 43% took 130 minutes. Half-life means time to decay to 50%, or equals 0.5 of original amount. Original, not origami amount, original amount. Okay, so probably a bit less than 130 minutes because it's already down to 43% at, at 130. What about 5%? Okay, so maybe it says it takes around 100 minutes to, to decay. So at 100 minutes, it's a half, roughly. At 200 minutes, it will be, think about that for a second, it will be a quarter because it's constant ratio. It's all about ratios as usual. After 300 minutes, it'll be an eighth. After 400 minutes, it'll be a 16th. Now, what is 1 16th? Let's see. Again, we're just ballparking here. We'll get to the exact answer in a minute. But 1 16th is 0.625. Ah, that's 6%. So we'd expect some, something very roughly 400 minutes. OK, so now we already know roughly what we're going to get for A and B. OK, so let's do A more precisely. Let's put it into the model. So we write down our general model. And we might be disturbed. We only have one number here. We had two things before because we had two, two unknowns. But let's, let's write it down real carefully. After 130 minutes, I'm going to put equals e to the k times 130. It went down to 43.1% of its original amount. Oh, OK. 43.1% is 0.431 times the original amount. But guess what? That's c. Remember, original amount is just exactly the initial value of y, that's c. Oh, so there's a c on both sides. So when you say of its original amount, we're already talking about growth or decay factors. This is really the ratio. The 0.431 is the ratio. That's always the situation where the c's are going to cancel when we focus on the ratio. So the c's cancel out. And I'm just going to put the 130 in front of the k. And I'm going to take the ln. And so that's 0.431. And then I'm going to divide uh, 0.431 over 130. And I'll just do that numerically. And so there's our k. Now remember, that's not the half-life yet. We're just we're putting it in this very general scheme, which is very, very useful. We don't know the c, and we never will, because in fact, we're always going to be comparing to the original amount, and that's OK. Now remember, we're not surprised to get a negative number. So minus, if I just put this in terms of decimals, 0064742t. That's as explicit as we're ever going to get for this problem, because they never actually tell us its original amount. So, um, so how do you get half-life? Well, that's again something where we have to think about what does half-life mean? Oh yeah, we already talked about that. It's half of the original amount. Aha, that's the phrase we love to see, because that means 0.5c. So we can just solve for, for that. So we put that in. Again, as soon as you get one of these numbers, you just recycle it back to the original model, even if everything's not determined. And here, everything we need to know is determined, because the c's are going to cancel there. And so 0.5 is going to be all this stuff. And I'm going to take the ln. And so this thing, uh, ooh, <laughs> it showed up in the, in the exponent. I don't really want that. Uh, OK, how do I get that out of there? Oh, I see. I see what I did wrong. OK, I'll fudge it. OK, that equals ln of 0.5. Oops. OK. And so t is ln 0.5 divided by this k. 
Okay. Now, wait, this should be a positive number. Oh, but there's a negative sign in it. How's this going to work? Well, ln of something that's less than 1 is negative. This is negative ln 2, as it turns out, because it's ln of 1 half. Rules of exponents or logs tell us that. But in any case, ln of something between 0 and 1 is always negative. The negatives will cancel, and we get 107.06. What was the idea? Let's see. This is minutes. Okay. Don't forget your units. Okay. So let's just clean this up a little bit. Okay. So there's our half-life. Okay. So that's nice to know. And we were right. It's about 100 minutes. It's about 107, in fact. Okay. Now, how long would it take for the sample to decay to 5%? It's almost exactly the same question as what we just answered for half-life. It's just this is going to be 0.05. So I'm just going to copy it in. This is it just it just basically says the sample amount, which we've got an explicit formula for, equals 5%, 0.05, of its original amount means times c. Okay, And so it's extremely similar. I'm just going to skip here. The only thing that's different is this is an 05. Okay, And we'll evaluate that. And yeah, 400-ish. We were a little low on our estimate, but that's okay. If we had done a very more precise estimate, we would have gotten closer to 400, four, maybe 450. So, but we knew this is the right ballpark. T is 463-ish minutes. Okay, that's it.